All right, so the five shapes that we can have uh, are going to be listed finally in this in this final uh, video here. The five shapes are the caged C, A, G, E, and D. So they spell the word C, A, G, E, D. Caged. Um, so if we move them around, we can cover the arpeggios and the chords and the scales, kind of figure out our in and out harmonies all over the fretboard. Um, so with this one, if you take a D chord and you bring it all the way up that shape until you reach here on fret 12, a lot of guitars have two dots right there, fret 12 and then fret 13. If you were to do a D chord shape right there, that would be like capoing it at the 10th fret. If you had a capo clamp, that would become a C chord. Uh, although to us guitar players, it looks like the, that D chord shape because we really just take these shapes and move them up and down and create all kinds of uh, music and, and, and everything kind of can come from that if, if you think of the cage system. Super, super helpful. So I'm gonna show you how I see that with the color theory here. Um, yeah, so those notes. First three strings make a D shape. It's actually a C chord, so it's in the key of C major. The blue notes in, in this key are going to be in the chord in the ar arpeggio, the first, third, and fifth, the G, C, and E, or the Do, Mi, and So. So I'm, I'm going through them here just once through, not, not like a great practice, just a really good uh, quick overview so you know what we're doing here. And then I've got booklets coming up that's going to break it down into a a way that's really good for practice and games and, and fun ways of jamming. So the letters here, we're going to be looking at start from the ninth fret and go up to the 13th fret. So the first note we're gonna do is on the 10th fret. That's a D note. Then we skip a fret, we get to the 12th fret, that's an E note. 13th fret is F. Next string over, we have a G on 10, an A on fret 12. The next string over, we have a C on fret 10, and D on fret 12. Then we go back a fret here. This would be fret nine. Now on fret nine, we've got a B. Fret 10, we got a C. Fret 12, we got a D. Next string over, we got fret nine E, fret 10 F, fret 12 G. Then we skip our fingers over here. Fret 10 is A on the second string. B is fret 12. C is fret 13. Small string, fret 10 is D. Fret 12 is E. And fret 13 is F. Again, if you haven't seen the other videos talking about the color theory, the whole idea is if it's a blue note, it's gonna be in harmony with the C chord. And then, if it's a green note, it's gonna be one of the um, colorful harmonies that, that match with it quite well. Um, we're what we call either the second or the ninth, or the, so the second or the ninth would be a D note if you add a D note to a C chord. The A would be either the sixth or the 13 if you add it to a C chord. So in my mind, those are green colors. Um, and the orange colors, they tend to be really tense. So that's like a B or an F. If you hear those over a C chord, they sound really tense. So those are the notes in their letters. Now, one thing that's good to know is what fingers to use. So finger one, two, three, or four, because we often try to use a four finger spread across the guitar. Like if, it's, if it was like a video game button, each fret is its own button. Each finger gets its own button or own fret. Each little space here is for its own finger. So instead of doing the first four frets, we're going way up here to the ninth and up to the 13th. So my pointer finger, finger one, is on fret 10. Then finger three is on fret 12. Finger four is fret 13. Next string, finger one, finger three. Next string, we shift down. This is fret nine now. So instead of having the pointer finger there, we shift this whole finger position back. We start on fret nine with finger one, 
fret 10, finger 2. Fret 12, that's finger 4. The same fingers are on the next string. Finger 1, finger 2, finger 4. Then we shift the whole hand up a fret. Now we're on fret 10 with finger 1, fret 12 with finger 3, fret 13 with finger 4. Then the string below that, the small string, we got finger 1 and finger 3. So again, this is just like knowledge. This is just understanding with the mind like where some of the things are. But knowledge is kind of useless unless you put into a, a really good practice strategy or practice plan. So um, I'm just rolling this out there just to get the concept going and I'm going to show all the breakdowns and games uh, are going to be released and, and booklets coming out real soon um, for jamming, writing songs and all kinds of fun things. So you can name the fingers, you can also name the intervals. So the intervals are like how many like intervals away, how many numbers away from the scale are you starting on? So the first number in the scale is actually the C note way in the middle here, but let's start on, on the big string. This is the second note of the scale, and it's green. The third note of the scale here is blue. The fourth note of the scale that's, here, I'll show you the letters one more time. So the first note of the scale would be C, but we're gonna start on the D, which is the second note in the alphabet, right? Like C, D. So if you count your alphabet, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. That's eight different letters. So we've, we've numbered them and labeled the numbers of the scale of the letters. So here we are. Um, <laughs> interval number two. Interval number three, third note of the scale, fourth note of the scale, fifth note of the scale, sixth note of the scale, seventh note, first note, second note of the scale, third note, fourth note, fifth note, sixth note of the scale, seventh note, first note, second note of the scale, third note, fourth note. So you'll notice that like you'll have a low D and a high D, and they're both called the second note of the scale because it's like the second letter, C, D. Um, but we have high and low versions of those, right? Now, saying it in solfege is really helpful too because the solfege language, there's there's an understanding of, of kind of how those notes work, and um, it can be helpful to learn that as well. So we're gonna start on fret 10, that would be Re. Fret 12 is Mi. 13 is Fa. Then so, la, ti, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, re, mi, fa. So any of the notes like do, mi, and so, those are the blue notes. You can make that little D shape out of. If we ever play those notes, they're going to be in harmony. Between the hospital and the fire department, so and your sirens sometimes. But anyways, we've got me, so, do, me, so, do, me. All the blue notes, all the green notes, re and la, re la. They have a different sound in the scale. To me, they're they're quite colorful against a blue a blue note, and the orange ones, the T and the fa, they sound really tense. So um, they would be kind of quite spicy and fiery. So they often want to resolve, like Fa wants to often go back to Mi, um, depending on what chord you're in, right? So this is kind of a, a color scheme to help you know when you're in harmony and out. Blue is totally in the C chord. Green is a colorful extension. And then the, um, the T and the Fa can, can make more of a tense sound against it. Um, there's going to be tons of scales, tons of keys, but they can all be related to like a basic four color code scheme and these red lava notes, which can help us decide whether we want to pass through them or, or land on them, uh, whether they're tense or, or in harmony. And we use that tension and release um, consonants and dissonance on purpose. So kind of finding out where those notes are through a good practice plan repeating things, jamming them, playing with them, just, just getting experience with these these notes can help us to kind of know what all these, the whole point of all these frets can be, 
and how that you can combine them in ways that sound really harmonious or you can combine them in ways that sound tense. I think most music uses a bit of both, um, but you would want, kind of want to intentionally know, oh, that sounds tense or that doesn't. You can do that by ear. You could also do it um, with making a color system like this lava game. So there's a really quick map overview. Uh, it's going to be a lot more fun uh, when you start to see how you can kind of use this to jam and, and make music out of it. But uh, there is the whole five shapes. C shape in that first position, A shape in the next position, a G shape chord in the next position, an E shape chord in the next position, and a D chord shape in the next position. And that 12 frets actually just repeats on the other side of the guitar. So that covers the whole fretboard in the major scale. Um, and you could almost argue that the major scale is kind of where everything just branches off of in, in a lot of ways anyways. So this is a really great way to start. And then um, we just kind of elaborate from there. But using that color theory, trying to find patterns and recognize, you know, when you're in and out or, or harmonious to whatever you're playing. All right. Watch out for more videos, subscribe and like and share. Thanks guys.